So variables are probably the most important thing in programming. They enable the program to store and effectively remember certain values. So if you think about something like a game, if you couldn't store your score or, or the number of lines you've got left, it wouldn't be a very interesting game. Um, so when we use a variable to store these values within the program, uh, there's two things we need to think about. First of all, we need to think about what value it is we actually want to store. And then we need to think about uh, what we're going to call it. So the first thing we're going to have a look at is the naming of variables. So the naming of variables in Python is quite straightforward. You can use any word uh, or combination of letters and numbers that isn't a no command. So we couldn't use print as a variable name, for example. But we could use something like age. And um, if, you, if you're new to Python, obviously it's a bit difficult to know what all of the commands are. Uh, don't forget that commands are appear in a different color in the uh, IDE so you can tell whether it's a command whether it changes color and if your program behaves a bit strangely that might be a clue. You can also um, add digits so you can have age 1 and age 2 for example but um, you might have a convention within your team if you're working together and um, there are other ways of combining words for example um, if you have uh, multiple words, so age now, some people use an underscore, for example, that's called snake case. Some people use capital letters uh, for each new word, that's called camel case. So you might want to decide between your team that, that kind of convention. Um, so if we want to give a variable a value, that's called a definition or an assignment, and we just use the equal sign. Now, equal signs can get a bit confusing when you first start programming because some programming languages like Python and JavaScript use a single equals sign in some places and a double one elsewhere. Other programming languages like BASIC just use one uh, everywhere. So what a single equals means in Python is make it equal to. A double equal sign like that means is it equal to. So that's a, a, that's a comparison and that's an assignment. So if I say age equals 21, what that means is store this value 21 and call it age so I can get it back later. Now if I run my program, we can see it doesn't look like it's done anything. We can see that the cursor's moved down so it has done something but it's, there's no output. It doesn't say, oh yes, I've stored age and uh, it's 21. Um, however, that value of age persists, it stays there uh, the whole time I'm running my program. So if I want to see what the value of that is, I can type age over here or um, in, in a program, I would need to type um, print age, and it would tell me what that was. And that would stay the same unless I changed it. Um, note that you need to be a little bit careful because variable names are case sensitive. So if I say age equals 22, for example, and run that program, age and age are two separate variables. So just be a little bit careful when you're typing. Probably easy if you don't use any capital letters at all. Um, then you uh, have that confusion. So that's uh, we're defining there. We, now, this um, is a number, and it's a specific type of number. It's a whole number called an integer. Now, some programs require you to declare a variable before you use it. So if you've used C, for example, or Java, um, you might say int age, or if you've used Visual Basic, you might say dim age as integer. You don't need to do that in Python. So sometimes that can lead you to not be quite sure uh, the type of a variable. So there is a command called type which tells you what is stored in that variable. So if I do type age, it will say age is an int which is short for integer. So there are four main types that you're going to use in your basic uh, Python programming. So you could have uh, an integer which is uh, a whole number. Um, you can have something like a so a length, for example, um, would be you know you can, might have a decimal. Um, obviously, you can't have units in there, so you'd have to decide what units you're working in. Sometimes that can be um, uh, for, that would need to be something that's agreed across the whole of the program. So I used to work in the financial services um, sector in software, for example, and lots of the programs worked in pennies rather than pounds. Uh, because you could work in whole numbers then and computers are much better with whole numbers. So you can do that kind of thing. You can say name equals Andrew. So it's very much like printing. So if you want to store some text, you need to put it in speech marks. And again, you can use plus and things and you can you can have calculations. So you could say age equals 20 plus 1 if you wanted to and it would store the value 21. So 
exactly the same as printing. And there is one more type which is um, true or false. So if you've got um, some sort of variable, so you, so as your game finished, so more typically you might I suppose you might call that something like game over. Um, so while the game is running, that will be false. Um, and then when the game is over, that would become true. So that is a type of variable called a Boolean variable, named after George Boole, who came up with this um, system of mathematics, including ands and ors and things. Um, and um, that can either be true or false. So if I run my program, again, it won't look like it's doing anything. But if I say type length, we'll be able to see that actually that's a different type of variable. So that's a float. So float means a floating point number, a decimal number. Uh, if I say type name, it'll tell me that it's a STR, short for string, which means text. And if I do type game over, and here you can see the, the downside of having longer variable names. So you can use single letters, which makes it look a bit like algebra. That's probably the other um, extreme. So it bit, might be a bit difficult to work out what's what. Um, so that's telling me it's a bool, which is short for boolean. Now, it will Python will change the the value uh, or the type of a variable depending on the value. So if I get a bit older and I say age equals twenty one point five then what happens, because when I checked a minute ago, age was a, a whole number, wasn't it? So what's happened to it now? So now age has become a float. So one of the benefits of not having to declare the type of variables is that Python can change it. Occasionally it can lead to some unexpected results, but less so with Python 3 than with Python 2. Python 2 used to do some quite strange things. Um, so if you're if you're doing some sort of calculation or concatenation, so if we were doing, um, so if we wanted to join two pieces of text together, what would be the type of that? Well, obviously, if you join two pieces of text together, and the type command also works on just literally you know, um, strings and numbers, so what would be the type, what would be the result of adding two pieces of text together? Well, it would be another piece of text. What would be the type of adding two whole numbers together, it would be an integer. So two integers give you another integer. What would happen if you div divided? So if you did what type one divided by two. So just in the same, uh, just like Excel, we use slash for divide and the asterisk for multiplication. Now if we've got two, got two whole numbers there, if we divide two whole numbers, we don't get a whole number answer. So Python 3 is clever enough to appreciate that. Python 2 used to give you some strange results. So if, if you just type in a calculation, it should give you the answer. So 3 divided by 2 is 1.5, which is the answer we'd hope for. Python 2, if you try that, um, it would give you the result uh, 1, because it would say, well, if you're... Um, well, in Python 2, the result was always the same type as the numbers that went into uh, the calculation. So. You can also, um, so it's not clever enough to realise that um, 2 and 2.0 are the same. So if you do type 2, it'll tell you that it's an integer. If you do type 2.0, it'll tell you that it's a float, even though they're effectively the same thing. Um, what you can also do, we talked about the equal sign as well. Um, so you can use the equal sign to compare things. So is 1 equal to 1? Yes, it is. Is 2 equal to 2.0? Yes, it is. So it will do that comparison even though it thinks they're different types. So it's not going to trip you up uh, when you do your programming. But also you can do things like uh, if you do age equals 21 and then you can compare that value with uh, 21 and it will tell you that it is. It's true. So that's quite useful. And you can do other things like age, age is less than 30. So you can do all the mathematical comparisons that you're used to from your maths classes. What you can also do is you can you can redefine variables. So if I say now age is 30, the value of the variable is what it will be at the end of the program. So this program here it sets age to be 21 at the top, but then further down it sets it to be 30. So if you redefine a variable, um, its value 
gets updated. So at the end of the program, age has the value 30. Um, you can do um, things like this. So you can also say age equals age plus one. Now for non-programmers, that looks a little bit of a strange thing because lots of these calculations are quite similar to uh, ones in algebra. However, you can't do x is equal to x plus one in um, maths, for example, because that's that's just not true. But the thing to remember is that the equal sign in Python means make it equal to, not it is equal to. So what this is saying is make age equal to age plus one. So if the if you got the name of a variable appears twice in a definition like this, the one on the left is the new value. So what this is saying is make the new value of age equal to the old value of age plus one. So now if I run this program, it starts off at 21. I've made it 21 plus one. So now if I look at that, it's become 22. So quite often, that's the sort of thing you want to do with maybe a score in a game. So if a particular thing happens, you might want to give somebody 10 points. So you'll say score equals score plus 10. There is a shorthand for that in Python, which is plus equals um, age. So what age plus equals age means the same as, no, sorry, plus equals one, um, means age equals age plus one. So that means add one to that particular value. And you can also do the um, similar thing with text. So you can say name plus equals, and then you can add some text to it. So if I wanted to add something to the end of my name, an exclamation mark there, for example, if I have a look at the value of name, it's Andrew with an exclamation mark at the end. Now, obviously, when you're adding uh, numbers, it doesn't matter which way you round you add them. So uh, 1 plus age and age plus 1 are the same. But if you use plus equals with text, it's always going to add it on to the end. So if I wanted to add them the other way around, I'd have to get, do this. I'd have to say name equals hello plus name. And then if I wanted to add something on the start of the name. So now I run that, I have a look at name. And it says hello, Andrew, because the hello is at the start. So sometimes order matters, but with numbers, for example, it doesn't. Now, another interesting um, quirk of true and false is that um, true and false are really just numbers. So I can do things like this. I can say if the game over, if game over is um, false, in fact, let's let's try a different example. So let's say um, uh, so we're going to call it we're gonna, I'm going to flip the logic of it so I'm going to say running is true okay and I'm going to have another I'm going to have another variable with my score in so say my score is 10 and what I'm going to do then is I'm going to print my score so it just prints 10 at the end um, and the value of running has no bearing on that. However, look what happens if I do this. Now it still prints 10, so I've multiplied score, which is a number, by running, which is a Boolean variable. So what, what's happened there? Well, let's have a look. So score, which is 10, times running gives me 10. Okay, well what about if I go false there? So if I click run now, score times false gives me zero. So an interesting property, and this is, can be quite useful in your programs, of Boolean variables, true and false, is that actually false is zero and true is one. And that can be quite useful in calculations sometimes. That can simplify calculations. Rather than saying, if this is true, then do this, otherwise do that, you can actually include the Boolean variable in your calculation. And you can see that in some of my example programs if you have a look at the link uh, below the playlist.